Today, we're talking about WPA3, its promise for safer Wi-Fi, and the problems along the way. Let's go. WPA3 is the next generation of Wi-Fi security. Unlike the WPA2, used in coffee shops like this, it doesn't leave you vulnerable to snooping or other sorts of wireless attacks. Now, in spite of this, it is a new standard and it's not perfect. And that means it's actually already been hacked twice. So to get to the bottom of this, we spoke with Matthew Van Hoff, a Wi-Fi security researcher well known for finding vulnerabilities in WPA2 and WPA3 after his talk at the Black Hat Security Conference in Las Vegas. So I am uh, Mati van Oof, and the topic of my research is essentially network security with a focus on wireless security. So the main issue is that it used to be with WPA2, if you would connect to a network and there's an attacker or adversary nearby, he or she would be able to then capture the connection attempt to your access point, to your router, and they can then take that information and try to brute force, try to recover the password that the network uh, is using. And they fixed that with WPA3 to make that um, almost impossible. One other addition of WPA3 is that they now try to protect management frames, meaning a deauthentication attack where you forcibly try to disconnect clients from a network, that should also be prevented with uh, WPA3. With WPA2 today, two major flaws give rise to the most serious types of attacks. The way all modern devices connect to password-protected Wi-Fi networks is to exchange information called a handshake. In this exchange, your device and the router share a hashed version of the Wi-Fi password. In the first major flaw, an attacker within range can simply listen in and capture the hashed password when you connect. Once they capture the handshake, they can just leave and use a program like Hashcat to try to crack the network password. Now, if the attacker isn't in range when a device is connecting, they don't really need to wait. They can just force a handshake by sending management frames called deauth packets. This will disconnect your device from the Wi-Fi network, forcing it to exchange a new handshake anyway while the attacker just listens in. This is the second major flaw. Should an attacker decide to not let you reconnect, they can send a continuous flow of deauth packets thus denying you all network connection in a protocol-based denial-of-service attack. Now, WPA3 is supposed to be a response to these security problems, using the new Dragonfly handshake designed to frustrate attackers. While a nearby attacker could capture a handshake, it takes too long to brute force, and they have to stay in range of the router to try every single password guess. Deauth packets and other management frames are also now encrypted in WPA3 which prevents attackers from jamming a WPA3 network by forging deauth packets between a router and any connected devices. WPA3 also includes a feature called forward secrecy. And what this means is that if someone was able to capture some of your Wi-Fi traffic and later on learned your password, they wouldn't be able to go back and decrypt everything that they gathered. Now for this and all the other security updates, you should definitely update to WPA3. However, because it's a new standard, that means it's not without its own flaws. So I would say that there are two main categories of flaws. The first one is if you configure a network to support both WPA2 and WPA3, then it's possible that even if you have a new smartphone, for example, that supports WPA3, an adversary can still force your smartphone into using WPA2, and then some of the old attacks against WPA2, they would still apply. And the second flaw is that uh, in the new handshake of WPA3, when a device executes that handshake, brief briefly summarized, it leaks some data to either how long it takes the access point to reply, as one example, and an attacker can use this leaked information to still try to recover the password of the network, even though that shouldn't be possible. After Matthew discovered that WPA3 could leak data, the news took the security community by storm. Viewers of Hack5 should remember Shannon covering these same issues recently as well. The creators of WPA3 were forced to react with a hasty fix to address the timing attack, but in doing so, they also made it possible to jam WPA3. So to break down the original issue, when a device joins the WPA3 network, 
the router converts the password into a point on an elliptic curve. Most passwords, however, will generate an invalid point. Now when this happens, the router simply adds a number and tries again until it gets a valid point on the curve. Problem solved, right? Well, unfortunately, a nearby attacker can measure this by the time it takes for the router to reply, and this information lets the attacker more easily brute force the Wi-Fi password. Then, based on the unique amount of time it takes for WPA3 routers to process different passwords, hackers can rule out large groups of password guesses to try brute forcing attacks. This breaks WPA3's promise of immunity from brute forcing attacks, less than a year after its release. They decide to solve this by always making the access points uh, perform a lot of computations and, in a sense, always reply uh, a bit slower. The way that they made it reply slower is by making this algorithm that is used internally perform 40 iterations of a certain function. Now, this, this, this prevents the timing leak if done properly. However, doing these 40 iterations, it adds a lot of overhead. So if you then, for example, implement WPA3 on a very lightweight device or an IoT device, this would mean that your handshake becomes very slow or that it drains the battery of the device a lot, meaning you result in a denial of service attack. So the implementers, they're really met with a dilemma here. Either they implement this countermeasure and this means they possibly are vulnerable to denial of service attacks or they don't or implement just a weak version and then they might be vulnerable to the side channels. As mentioned, their fix paved the way for a fairly simple denial service attack. The fix required each device to hide the number of iterations by running 40 times, masking the timing issue by making all handshakes take the exact same amount of time. On devices like routers with limited resources, hackers can send many handshakes at the same time, causing the router to crash and taking the network completely offline. With over a billion different devices using the Wi-Fi standard, the security of the connected world relies on the final version of WPA3 that's released to the public. Now, while none of these flaws are yet fatal for WPA3, researchers are definitely anxious that some flaws this big are already cropping up. Now, ideally, the development of WPA3 would be open to researchers who want to contribute, but unfortunately for now, it remains primarily closed. Until a secure version of WPA3 is made available to the public, WPA2 will have to suffice, and users will need to be careful about connecting to open networks or networks with weak passwords and make decisions about whether or not it's safe to connect. That's all we have for this episode. Thanks for watching, and if you have ideas for future episodes, you can hit me up on Twitter at Cody Kinsey. You can also check out our channel Redia to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.